South Sudan Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Relations says his government has assured South African President Siru Ramaphosa that South Sudan will hold its first election since independence at the end of this year. President Ramaphosa, the chair of the African Union appointed high-level ad hoc committee on South Sudan concluded a three-day visit to Juba on Thursday. The opposition, led by First Vice President Riyak Mashar, has said that the country is not prepared to hold free, fair and credible elections because the government is far behind in implementing the revitalized peace agreement. Foreign Minister James P. P- Pitia Morgan tells me that the country is on track to implement the agreement, culminating in elections in December. South Africa is one of the guarantors through the role that was assigned to five African Union member states, known as the C5. And uh, the C5 always have uh, the role to make sure that the uh, revitalized peace agreement was uh, implemented. Yes, the issue of elections is uh, always discussed and uh, implementation of the revitalized peace agreement is always uh, uh, being uh, discussed uh, whenever a visitor comes to the country, especially South Africa, in that capacity of C5. As you know, uh, Minister, there's uh, some disagreement between President Salva Kiir, your government, and uh, also the first vice president, Riyak Machar. There's an argument that your government has not done enough to provide the necessary means, for example, the resources needed to have the election, but yet you are insisting that the elections must take place. What did uh, your president tell President Ramaphosa? I really don't understand how we insist. The opposition, or the point I, I'm trying to get here is when you say your government. So the government is uh, both our government, both of us with the opposition, we share our, the same government and we also share the agreement and also we share the same responsibilities. The uh, implementation of the revitalized peace agreement was not only the work of the government, it was our work, all of us as a parties. You know very well that this agreement uh, ended the lifespan of the revitalized peace agreement in uh, 2022, 2023. We were supposed to go for the elections. It, it was the agreement itself that uh, directs us, and we have to follow it to the letter and spirit, as people always say. And that is why we came up with something called the roadmap. And the roadmap also, they gave 24 months, including the year 2023 up to the year 2024. And the year 2024 is when we are talking about the elections. It is not about we as a government, because here in South Sudan, both government that you call government, or we just better rather call it parties, that let us have another 24 months, which we have now. And these 24 months also are coming to an end this coming December. So the meaning of roadmap, it was a road to urge all of us now to go for elections. So it is not we that you call the government. It was the agreement all the parties giving themselves 24 months. Then after 24 months, then the country had to be taken for elections. That is what it is. So, uh, Minister, are you telling me that uh, your government, as you say, that President Salva Kiir and uh, First Vice President Riyak Mashar assure the South African president that the election will take place in South Sudan as scheduled for this year? Exactly. Elections will take place as is scheduled this year. His Excellency uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, when he was in the country, he met all the political parties. He also met one-to-one with Dr. Riyak Mashar. And then he also had one-to-one with, with His Excellency the President, Salve K. Mayadit, and uh, that is it, because now this is what the agreement says. All the political parties in South Sudan are accountable to this agreement, and the final stage will come in December. So we are going according to the stages of the agreement. James Pitya Morgan is South Sudan Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Relations. The Red Tabala armed group based in the Democratic Republic of Congo has renewed attacks in Burundi since late 2023. The group, which is an abbreviation of the French resistance pool in Itar do d'Etoile or Burundi, resistance for rule of law in Burundi, is one of a handful of rebel groups seeking to unseat the Burundi government. 
The Red Tabala attacks, however, are targeting civilians rather than government installations, military bases or strategic infrastructure. This has thrown the group's motivations into question. Red Tabara was created in 2015 in the aftermath of a political crisis and failed coup by some military officers against Burundi's then president Pierre Nkurunziza, who died in 2020. The, claim, the group claims to fight for a return of the rule of law, which it claims the current government has abandoned. However, its indiscriminate attacks against civilian populations are increasingly falling into the pattern of terror acts. In February 2024, Red Tabara fighters attacked Bolinga village, which is in Burundi on the border with the DRC, killing nine people. Two months earlier, the fighters attacked Vugizo also in Burundi near the DRC border, killing 20 people. Red Tabala operates out of the DRC's Voratar Eastern region. In South Kivu province, the province shares a porous 243 kilometers border with Burundi. Political and economic interests mainly focused on the control of mining areas and the trade of minerals are playing a key role in the region's dynamics. The attacks have heightened tensions between Burundi and its neighbor Rwanda. Burundi's president Evariste Ndayishimiye has accused the Rwandan authorities of supporting Red Tabara rebels, a move which has the potential to undermine his country's peace mission in the DRC and its influence in the region. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.